Good morning and welcome to Enfield Congregational UCC. I'm the Reverend Dr. Daniel Rodriguez Schlorp and I'm happy to be back as Pastor Greg's pulpit supply for this Sunday. Today is a very important day in the Christian liturgical calendar, the first Sunday after Shark Week. <laughs> or as it is also called, Shark Tide. Yes, I was watching online last Sunday, but I choose not to say anything about Pastor Greg's chosen vestments. You have a number of announcements in, your, in the back of your order of service today, but I'd like to highlight one or two of them. Uh, first, we will not be reading the Old Testament reading today, so uh, that's a note uh, for everyone. We'll go right into the hymn following the children's, um, that's right, right? Children's moment. Yeah, following the children's moment. And, and we have a couple here as well. It used to be something here. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, this is a call to a special meeting of the Enfield Congregational Church. All members of the Enfield Congrega Congregational Church are hereby called to a special meeting to be held Sunday, July 31st, 2022. This meeting is to be held in the sanctuary immediately following church service. The purpose of this meeting is to conduct the following business. To accept the following proposal for using the extra money from the facilities improvement project. Provide electrical outlets and dehumidifiers and air conditioners in the classrooms and offices, which would be $1,950. Install a pulley system along with extra wiring to enable the lowering of the chandelier which would be $5,270. Painting of office in the nearly new shop, replacing, da replacing damaged ceiling tiles in the office hallway in room five, and build new stairs with handrails at the back door of the nearly new shop, $3,600. And to act upon any other business that may, be, may properly come before this meeting, please conduct Kevin Mayo, council moderator. It says at least one week, that's today, but say by Wednesday, at least uh, one week in advance of the meeting, so any new business may be added to the agenda. Kevin Mayo, council moderator, Sharon Jet, church clerk, and we would need 10%, it's not here, but we would need 10% of the membership to be here to make a quorum. Good morning. Um, Next Sunday, we will be dedicating the backpacks. Our goal is 350, we're about 30 short at this time, so if anyone hasn't brought their backpacks in yet, please bring them in this week so we can make our goal of 350. Um, five months ago today is when Russia invaded Ukraine. So today, by our Ukraine candle, we have their national flower, sunflowers. Um, Oh, and we're going to be having our second annual ice cream social on August 6th at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. This is a free event. Everyone is invited to it. We're going to have bounce houses as well as the ice cream. There will be a sign-up for volunteers to work at it in coffee hour after the service today. So please think about if you can help on August 6th. We need people to help set up. We need people to man the bounce houses so that we don't end up with too many kids in there. We want to have like younger kids in one and older kids in the other to keep people from getting injured. And we need people to serve ice cream and to clean up afterwards. Also next Sunday, after the, our special meeting that we're having, there will be a chance to say goodbye to Rob in Fellowship Hall. Deacons will be doing coffee hour. We're going to have Cupcakes and juice in there available, and it gives you a chance to say goodbye. We're really sorry that Rob is leaving us. Thank you. We thank God for these opportunities for fellowship and service. Thanks be to God. Please rise in body or spirit, and let us begin with our call to worship printed in your order of service, and remain standing for the opening hymn. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. 
faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord and make a path for God's steps. Let us worship God. Holy God, you are our generous parent, our patient teacher, our constant friend. We live by the hope of your promises, seek to follow your way, and rely on the gift of your spirit, by whose power we breathe and move and find our being. Amen. Let us sing praise to God. to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has put on me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. without end, without end, amen. World without end, without end, amen. World without end, without end, amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let's sing for the kids who aren't in the sanctuary right now. <laughs> they're here, but they're not in the sanctuary. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Knock, knock. Canoe. Can you come out and play? Ha 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 Knock, knock. Chew. Chew who? What does that mean? Ha 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 ha. Knock, knock. Boo. Why are you crying? Knock, knock. Orange. Aren't you glad this is my last knock-knock joke? <laughs> so the reason why I say knock-knock, oh my goodness, here they are. Come in here. You missed the knock-knock jokes. You coming? You going to come sit up? All right, I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to say one again just cuz they came in. You heard me? Oh, you were on the speaker. You heard me in the nursery on the speaker. And look, we have baby R here too. 
So why do you think I'm telling a knock-knock joke in church? Can you make the, can you make the knock-knock noise? Knock on that pulpit there, Jude. All right. Okay, because in today's story, Jesus' disciples ask him about how to talk to God. Okay, hold on. Jesus' disciples tell, ask him about how they can talk to God. And you know what he says? That's what he said. He said, that is, that's exactly what he said, though, Halligan. He, he, I know. That's exactly what he said. He said, knock, and God will answer. Isn't that amazing? Knock, and God will answer. Knock. Can you, knock again for me. With your knuckles. There you go. And that's all we have to do to talk to God. But you know what else he did? Who's there? Fire. Fire who? Fire the top. Fire the top. That's right. So he also taught them a prayer, which we're going to do right now. So this is going to be our prayer before we go back and sit either in the nursery or come back here. I think you're going to go back to the nursery. So we're going to have a repeat after me prayer, but we're going to do the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. So this is a repeat after me prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. Earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Give us this day, day our, daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, but it is our debt, as we forgive our debtors, we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, we do not into temptation but deliver us from evil, from evil, for thine is the kingdom, The power, the power, and the glory, and the glory, and the glory. forever, forever. Amen. 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 How do we say amen? amen? Amen. One more time. Amen. Amen. And now you're going to go back. I think Miss Michaela is going to take you into the nursery today. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Please join in singing him, Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive.
The epistle lesson today is from Colossians, I butchered that name, I think, chapter 2, verses 6 through 19. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set them aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God.
The gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, let me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me, the door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Howard. Thank you also to Rob and our wonderful violinist this morning, and Mary and Debbie and Dan for all your work in the service today and keeping me organized. Have you ever cried out in desperation for something you wanted? Or needed. One of my friends who lives in India is figuring out what it means to be an uncle just now. His sister got married not too long ago and she has a baby. Rushikesh now gets to babysit. That means he has to try to figure out what all those sighs and groans mean. He was delighted one day when his nephew first smiled at him. Those of you who have bore children know what that means. Rashikesh was so delighted, in fact, that he told his sister that his nephew had bonded with him. His sister, who knows her child best, laughed. Oh, she smiled, did he? That means you'll need to change his diaper soon. <laughs> Disappointed, Rashikesh changed the diaper and learned an important lesson that day. Sometimes we think certain phenomena are signs meaning one thing, but they actually mean another. Again, have you ever cried out in desperation for something you wanted or needed? Consider the LA riots that occurred after Rodney King was brutalized by police back in 1992, 30 years ago last month, believe it or not. The four police officers were acquitted and violence took hold of the city. Fury over the acquittal, stoked by years of racial and economic inequality in the city, spilled over into the streets, resulting in five days of rioting in Los Angeles. One of the first videos of documentary witness, 15 excruciating minutes of police brutalizing an African-American young man. This first victim, Rodney King. This video ignited a national conversation about racial and economic disparity, and police use force that continues to today 30 years later. And by the way, I'm not under the delusion that all police officers are bad. Yes, we're talking about the bad apples, but there are a lot of bad apples, let's be honest. So here's what happened in 1992. Rodney King was fleeing the police, he says, for fear of his life. When police finally stopped him, King was ordered out of the car. LAPD officers then kicked him repeatedly then beat him with batons for reportedly 15 minutes. 
The video showed more than a dozen cops standing by, watching and commenting on the beating. King's injuries resulted in skull fractures, broken bones and teeth, and permanent brain damage. But the four police officers were acquitted. This reaction to the acquittal in South LA was particularly violent. At the time, more than half of the population there was black. Tension had already been mounting in the neighborhood in the years leading up to the riots. The unemployment rate was an astounding 50%. A drug epidemic was ravaging the area, and gang activity and violent crime were high. The incident intensified the black community's frustration with the criminal justice system. And at the same time, the community's anger was also deepening against the LAPD. African Americans said they did not feel protected during times of need, but instead reported being harassed and without cause. On the third day of the riots, Rodney King himself appeared in front of the Beverly Hills courthouse, which had failed him, and said, people, I just want to say, you know, can we all get along? Can we get along? But the riots continued for another two days. During the five days of unrest, there were more than 50 riot-related riot deaths including 10 people who were shot and killed by LAPD officers and National Guardsmen. More than 3,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed, including approximately 2,000 Korean-run businesses. In all, approximately $1 billion worth of property was destroyed. Adjusted for inflation today, that's $2.1 billion. More than 2,000 people were injured and nearly 6,000 alleged looters and arsonists were arrested. Yet today, videos and photos of people of color, particularly African Americans, being brutalized if not unjustly slaughtered, are all too common. Of course, another king the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said famously, riots are the language of the unheard. Here's the full quote. But it is not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without, at the same time, condemning contingent, intolerable conditions that exist in our society. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellions to get attention. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last 12 or 15 years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity." End quote. Indeed, Jody David Armour, a criminal justice and law professor at the University of Southern California, says grimly of the LA riots, ain't nothing changed but the year it is. Just like the baby smiling, indicating something radically different than what my friend Rashikesh assumed, so too the riots are communicating something more complex and profound than a mere disdain for the law, which may appear on surface. But rather, what happens when the rule of law becomes unlawful itself? And law enforcement becomes unreliable and the judicial system stacked against you. We now turn to our gospel reading for today. In the face of devastating events in our polarized political climate, prayer has been code for, I don't know what else to say, or I want to say something neutral and unoffensive, or I don't want to take action. So often, politicians, leaders, and even clergy offer thoughts and prayers, 
in response to tragedy or injustice because it is the easiest thing to say. But Jesus didn't teach us to pray so that we could be passive and unoffensive. In the gospel reading for today, Jesus offers a parable about a persistent and in other translations, shameless neighbor whose audacity to keep asking will eventually get him the help he needs. Jesus teaches us that prayer should be like knocking on your neighbor's door in the middle of the night, demanding loaves of bread. When the neighbor doesn't want to get up because he's already in bed, Jesus' advice is to keep asking until he gives in. It doesn't matter if he wants to give you the bread or not, he'll eventually do so if you bother him enough. That's prayer. Prayer is meant to be bold, persistent, uncomfortable. It's meant to get results. Jesus says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. It may be unlikely that adding a petition to the prayers of the people is going to lead to any kind of radical, lasting change, yes. So what does Jesus mean when he says, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Him who knocks, the door will be open. Because it doesn't always ring true, does it? Probably nine times out of ten, a politician who offers to pray isn't really going to pray at all. And even if he or she does, it won't mean anything practical in terms of policy or resources. It's just a platitude. So why offer prayer? How does Jesus want us to pray? How can Jesus promise us that God will hear and respond to our prayers and that we will receive what we need that doors once locked shut will be open. There's a gospel song that I like, and I'll spare you my singing voice. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. You know this one. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Job says he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time because he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Truer words have never been spoken. I'll ask you one more time. Have you ever cried out in desperation for something you wanted or needed? I remember when I was a young boy, I would hear messages about homosexuality being wrong preached from a pulpit like this. Not this one, but like a pulpit like this. How do you think that affected a young boy like me who had just begun being curious about other little boys? But as far as I was being told, these thoughts I was having meant that I must be evil. So I lived for 12 years after puberty thinking I was actually demon-possessed. I, I literally thought I was demon-possessed. So like... Anyone who thought they were demon-possessed, I went forward to the altar to pray every single Sunday. I'd be pleading, hands up in the air, surrendering to Jesus, singing, I surrender all. I joined one of those Promise Keepers accountability groups and had other teenagers and grown-ups pray for me. What I was experiencing was so shameful, however, that I could not tell these other men what I was praying for. Every once in a while I went up for prayer, I would ask for the anointing of oil, meaning God had signified his victory over my same-sex attraction. I eventually got to college, which was a very conservative Christian college in the south suburbs of Chicago. I remember spending hour upon hour in Kelly Prayer Chapel, asking for God to take away this demon of same-sex attraction from me. It had so consumed my prayer life, it was basically all I ever prayed about. I wanted to be normal. I wanted it earnestly. I wanted it badly. But what I had in mind 
was not what God wanted for me. Praise God. God did not answer my prayer in the way that I thought God would. Instead of taking away this demon of same-sex attraction, God took away my propensity to think of it as a demon. God gave me an understanding that these tearful prayers that I was praying, hour after hour, would not yield what the world wanted, that is for me to be a macho man who loves only women, but instead God would give me an appreciation for how God had in fact created me. For everyone who asks receives, not necessarily what is being asked for, okay? He who seeks finds not necessarily what is being sought after. And to the one who knocks, well, let's just say a door will be opened. Because our ways are not God's ways. That's why in another version of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray for God's kingdom come, God's will be done, not ours, on earth as it is in heaven. Furthermore, prayer happens in dark, quiet, private places. Prayer happens in moments of deep fear, of yearning, of reckoning. But prayer is not meant to stay just between us and God. Our prayers need to have hands and feet. Prayer is the practice of seeking God's presence and guidance as we work toward creating a better world. Prayer is one way we know God is with us, even when the challenges ahead seem insurmountable. Jesus wanted our prayers to lead us to difficult places, to challenge us to do uncomfortable things in his service, and to give hope. So if you're tired of hearing people offer their thoughts and prayers in the face of devastating circumstances because it doesn't seem like enough, then it's time for us to change how we think about prayer, how we think about prayer. It is time for us to reclaim what it means to pray the way Jesus taught us. It is time for us to be shameless, to keep asking for God's presence in our lives and in the world, despite how daunting our challenges may seem. So what is happening in the world today that requires our shameless persistence of prayer? What is happening in our lives that needs to change? What are we seeking? What are we hoping for? Jesus promises us, us that if we ask, if we knock, the door will be open. But we might have to knock hard and often. We might have to ask others to join us. Jesus invites us to pray with the assurance that God is listening. And not only that, but God is acting on our behalf ready to respond and to transform our lives and the world around us. And if we have moments when we feel like our prayers are weak, if we don't know what to do or say, we can be like the disciples and say, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus stands ready not only to answer our prayers, but also to show us the way to be in relation with God. May it be so. Amen. In our sharing of concerns today, we have two. Roberta is home with double pneumonia today. So let's pray for her. And Brenda is getting over COVID for the second time. Yeah. For all these persons and all those in need, hold your prayer near for God. And I'm going to open the floor to any joys because none have come my way. So is there anyone, anyone who has anything exciting to share, something new? No matter how small. Yes.
for an empowering meeting. Thanks be to God. We give God, we give thanks to God for these blessings. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, teach us to pray so that we might awaken to the wonder of your presence, so that we might feel gratitude for your gift of life today, so we might discover your kingdom as revealed in our sisters and brothers, so we might find safety beneath the shelter of your wings, so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray so we might forgive those who have wronged us, so we might lead free from pretense and hypocrisy, so we might trust your perfect plans and not replace them with our own, so we might love you with our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves, so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Say it with me, Lord, Teach us to pray. So diverse hearts may harmonize as many voices become one. So our bodies might praise you in bowed heads and raised hands. So a spirit of criticism is replaced with an offering of sacrifice. So we consider others more important than ourselves or as important as ourselves so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Say it, Lord, teach us to pray. So the truth of your word resonates in what we say and sing. So we might prepare a way through the wilderness of chaos and pain. So our eyes are alert and our souls awake to your movement in our midst. So our good work is fruitful in the reign of your kingdom. So we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. So our voices bring a pleasing sound to your ear. So the notes of our instruments rise sweetly to your throne. So our singing is a light in the darkness, drawing nations to your grace. So our songs vibrate with the voice of the Lamb who was slain. So we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. So the lonely and hopeless find comfort in your abundant presence. So those in war and famine find the everlasting peace of your spirit. So we are not indifferent to the suffering of the world around us. So our songs help us to make us look more like you. Finally, so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. And now we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you.
probably one of the only churches that does offering the way you do, which I think is kind of cool. You know, you, you walk through the doors and you put in your offering and then it's presented here. So let us bless this offering which you've already given. As we wait for the coming of God's good reign, we answer the invitation to take part in God's work, bringing our tithes and offerings with joyful gratitude. Amen.
sings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose blood uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lord, you are the giver of every good gift. Accept these offerings, we pray, that through them we may do justice, and love kindness, and walk humbly with you, our sovereign and our God. Amen. see all as it is, and may it all be as we see it. May we be the ones to make it as it should be, for if not us, who? If not now, when? This is the answering, the cry of justice with the work of peace. This is redeeming the pain of history with the grace of wisdom. This is the work we are called to do. And this is the call we answer now, to be the barrier and the bridge, to be the living embodiment of our faith, to be about the work of building the beloved community, and to be a people of intention and a people of conscience for the glory of God. Amen. 